I will show you in the next few slides some uh, data on lorazidone. And before I do this, I would like to clarify briefly the pharmacology. So it's a potent D2 and uh, 5-HT2A antagonist. But for cognition, it's important to note that there is an affinity to 5-HT7 uh, receptor, which has a role in cognition and also in depressive symptoms, which we talked about before. But also the partial agonist uh, ability to uh, modify the 5-HT1A receptor has relationship to cognition as well. And the moderate um, um, A2C antagonism has also a role in cognition. And these are receptors which are not just um, sort of being associated with cognition, but also in animal models have shown to be relevant for cognition-like behaviors in small animals like mice and rats. Um, and in humans, it has been shown to express in brain areas which are shown to be um, key, key areas and, and functional areas of cognition. So here are, in the next few slides, some, some data on uh, studies where lorazidone uh, was used as well as other medications to look at the effects on cognitive functions. Now, cognitive functions are usually uh, measured by you know, you know, large cognitive batteries, so objective measures of cognitive function. For example, the trail-making test um, here, the TMT, um, other memory tests, concentration tests, processing speed tests. And very often in these types of studies, we have the individual test results, as you can see here, but also a composite score, which is kind of taking all the individual test results together to arrive at an overall cognition score, so which is usually you know, uh, expressed as a composite score here. And what you can very clearly see is that Razidone, for example, in some of the, uh, you know, overall there's a nominal, Im nominal improvement on the, in the effect size, which is shown here, 0.17, which is a, a small effect size. But some of the um, measures uh, achieve higher effect sizes here. And also the competence score has a sort of a smaller effect size. Now, the key question on effect size could be a whole talk in itself. So sometimes we say, oh, an effect size of 0.5 or 0.6 or 0.7 is clinically meaningful. However, in individual cognitive scores, a smaller effect size might have actually larger functional Im implications in patients, so which is really important to note. And then here we have other studies which so, show similar results. For example, Lorazidone here on cognition in the COC state, which um, is, a, is a cognitive test battery. Here again, improving uh, in terms of here uh, um, effect size in the, uh, sorry, the composite Z score, the change here for Lorazidone, uh, 160 milligrams, um, and improving that particularly compared here to placebo. And here, for example, quetiapine um, having a negative effect on that. And similar results we see also over long-term periods of three and six months here. So this is three months and this is six months extension uh, studies here again for lorazidone having um, a positive effects and significantly better effects than um, for quetiapine, for example, in direct comparison over the long period of time. And here is an extension even into 32 weeks of the um, of comparison, again, on different domains of cognition. And as you can see, there's a, there's a good and statistically significant or at least a numerical improvement on all of these um, cognitive scores. So that speaks to the fact that we have you know, positive effects on um, for lorazidone comparison to other antipsychotic medication, but more importantly, the lorazidone's um, uh, receptor profile actually helps to improve these important cognitive domains in addition, obviously, to uh, the antipsychotic uh, medication. Now, the second part of my talk is around physical health and comorbidities, as we've mentioned before. So, Metabolic syndrome has gained a lot of attention in that area. And metabolic syndrome, just as a, mem as a reminder, um, has here the different elements you know, of elevated plasma um, glucose levels, of obesity, uh, HDL, uh, cholesterol levels, uh, triglycerides, and also hypertension. So all of the, when they come together, obviously they make up the metabolic syndrome. And that's what we are talking about in the next few slides. Here in Australia, um, in psychosis, so the cardiometabolic risk factors have shown this type of uh, distribution. So the highest, um, 81 point, uh, sorry, 82.1 percent of patients have increased waist uh, circumference, uh, high density li lipoproteins. Half of the patients, nearly half of the patients, um, also 
uh, hypertension, triglycerides increased, and also plasma glucose um, in around 28% of patients. And you can see the, um, the relationship between BMI and physical activity, so that patients obviously with psychosis have a, a, you know, at least um, a very high, nearly in, in all of these, 56% um, have obese um, conditions, and around overweight is, is another 30%. So we have um, nearly 80% of patients with obesity or overweight, so which is really large. And that correlates, obviously, with low activity here, uh, or physical activity, or very low even. So nearly all of patients have, have very low activity. There's a very close relationship there. Now, in terms of the effects of antipsychotic medications um, on these metabolic conditions, we have you know, gained quite a lot of knowledge. Uh, for example, um, along these receptors, which are relevant for the cardiometabolic action, so H1, M3, and 5H22C, um, with clozapine or lansipine having a high metabolic risk, uh, risperidone, pimeperidone, quetiapine have sort of moderate uh, risk depending on the receptor activity here, and the low metabolic risk are ciprazidone, aripiprazole, lorazidone, and senapine. So this, I think, is really important to that we get a better understanding of what the risk profile of the medication is we are using for our patients. Now, you can also express it differently in the number needed to harm. So how many patients need to be treated, basically, in order to um, induce a weight gain, in this case, of more than 7 or more than 7%. So here, for example, on the right-hand side, olanzapine, you need to treat uh, one in uh, six patients, you know, will then have weight gain of, of seven or more percent. And on the left-hand side, one in 63 patients uh, treated with Latuda will have that, that type of weight gain. So this kind of gives us a really r nice risk stratification of uh, medication to use. It doesn't mean necessarily that all patients need to be treated with Latuda and no needs to be treated with olanzapine. That's not the, the message. The message is that we need to be aware of that risk stratification and then apply that to individual patients, to individual patient settings of what is best for the patient at, that, at a certain point in time and also in the long term. But these figures are really important for us for clinical decision-making programs. Now, in the next few slides, I will briefly show you the effects of different um, antipsychotic medications on aspects and components of the metabolic syndrome, starting here with weight and BMI. And this is always the same design, looking for a change, um, at a change from baseline to uh, week six um, as a follow-up. So here we have the, the types of medication, as you can see here, lorazidone, olanzapine, quetiapine, risperidone, haloperidol, and they're all compared to placebo. So here we see the baseline um, and, and then the, um, the, the means here uh, for BMI weight you know, over time. And the mean change, which you can see here, is expressed here. So there's little effects of these drugs which have a low bar uh, for lorazidone and risperidone, haloperidol on weight and BMI. And for olanzapine and quetiapine, we have high uh, changes in those areas which are very well um, aware of. Now, why is BMI important? Um, there's lots of research now going on on BMI and the effect actually on brain in relation to brain structure, in relation to brain function. And one of the effects here, which is shown in this particular study in, in, in around 200 uh, patients, which were readmitted um, uh, to hospital with schizof due to schizophrenia, it was shown actually that the, the um, higher BMI level, so the median of 28.5 kilograms per um, uh, square meter you know, body uh, surface were, was that cutoff basically saying that this was an independent predictor for readmission. So there's a very close relationship there. And this is not just a marker, like a surrogate marker of something else, of unhealthy lifestyles or whatever. It is probably related to much a more um, negative effect on brain function in itself, on brain metabolism, maybe also some effects um, of the medica of, of, of BMI um, on reduced efficacy uh, of medications as such. So it's really an important um, association, probably also a causal association here. And now looking at cholesterol, very similar findings, tri triglycerides, which are other components of the metabolic syndrome. Again, um, here we see for for the similar drugs like rosidone and haloperidol, actually negative effects on cholesterol and triglycerides, so there's a decrease. 
um, and an increase we see again um, similar for cholesterol and triglycerides here for lansipine, quetiapine, and risperidone compared to placebo. Similar picture again for LDL and HDL cholesterol. Um, again, uh, more positive, it's, it looks for lorazidone and similar to placebo levels here again, um, olanzapine being, being uh, less, um, less positive uh, as well as quetiapine. And glucose and HbH1c, um, again, really important measures which we should measure really on a more regular basis. And here you see a slightly different picture that most of the antipsychotic medications, even the haloperidol type ones, they would have um, negative effects on increasing glucose levels here, whereas lorazidone has, has no effect there. And HbH1c consequently um, has, you know, uh, uh, has been negative affected also by uh, orlansepine here as well. Now, insulin levels, as you know, insulin is a, a marker um, of, of glucose metabolism, and long-term increased levels of insulin are very negative um, for, for, um, for glucose metabolism, but also obviously increases the risk for insulin resistance, which is a, in a precursor of um, uh, type 2 diabetes, for example. So here, again, so therefore it's important to look at um, lorazidone here, negative effects, um, so a decrease on, on that uh, between baseline and, uh, and follow-up. And again, uh, uh, impairing effect basically on increasing insulin levels here by olanzapine and quetiapine. Mm -hmm.